I think I'm recording. No, post it online. It's yeah, it, it'll be posted. That's what I'm trying to figure out right now how to record. Make sure I record it. Okay. okay. It's recording right now. All right. So again, this is an entire semester review in 16 problems. And the reason I say that is because of this. I'm not going to be able to review everything you need to know in this particular review. So everything that you need to know will not be in this review. What I am going to do, though, is for... I want to make sure everybody's in. Um, I'm going to tell you what you should know from the packets that I've given you, from the live lectures that I've done. You should know, you should be able to know these things for this particular review. If you probably can do this review with no problem, you should be at worst making a 70. Um, you want to get to that 100, you're going to do a little bit of studying. All right. So I'll tell you what, to, what you need to know for each section. But again, this is not to be an inclusive review. It's meant to be a, uh, you need to re refresh and remind yourself what certain things are, right? All right. Um, okay. So we start off with, um, in the first test that we took, that's why I'm gonna start off with most of the stuff comes from the first test, test material. And, um, Look at number one, I'm gonna talk about it, and I'll tell you what else you need to know for it other than just what the problem is asking you, all right? So number one says, the histogram below shows the scores of 77 players in a golf tournament. How does the mean score compare with the median? And in this particular problem, here's what I'm asking you to do. Um, I'm asking you basically, um, do you know what the shape of a distribution tells you? That's what I want you to know. I want you to know the shape of the distribution. I'm not asking you to find the mean, I'm asking you to find the median. You can't find the mean or the median from a histogram to begin with. So what I want you to do when you see histograms in particular is um, focus on the shape of them. And so what you would do is draw this curve. And remember, we have three shapes. We have three shapes. We have what's called uh, left skew. We have right skew. And we have symmetric and for each one of those shapes you need to know how the mean and median respond to each other or where they're located within each other if i look at this particular distribution i can see that the shape of the distribution the shape of this distribution is going to be right skewed right now if i were to ask you to find the mean of this particular distribution you can't find the mean so i'm not going to ask you to find means of histograms for the most part. You really could find the mean of you. Uh, I don't know. I don't think you could. So I'm not going to actually do it anyway. But on this test, if anything actually to find a mean or a median, or even like any kind of summary statistics, such as the standard deviation, or a quartile, or anything like that, you're going to use your calculator. And on your calculator, remember to find means and medians in our calculators. We're going to use our list. So you would type some numbers into a list such as notice here, I have numbers in a list, right? And in this particular list, if I wanted to calculate a mean and a median for the list, I would press the stack key and then go to calc and I would do one bar of stats. And depending on what kind of software you have, you'll see it'll ask you for a list. Well, I'm gonna set my list to L1. If you have it like mine, you just type in L1 right? And then it actually frequency, leave that at one, and you press calculate. And it gave you all these different summary statistics. This was if I gave you numbers to actually put into a list. If I give you numbers to put into a list, you're going to put them into a list. All right. So when you do this, you can see your mean is sitting here. All these values, you have your mean, you have a standard deviation at S of X. And then if you keep scrolling down on yours, you will see the five number summary where that's located in there is the median, all right? But on this particular problem, I'm not asking you for those things. I'm just asking you, how does the mean compare to the median? And so because of that, you should be able to find the mean and the median or locate them on this uh, histogram by using their shapes. So again, our three shapes are left, right, and symmetric. And when I try to compare means and medians, remember that the mean is always in the tail. So like in this particular distribution here is the,
here's the mean and the median sits in the peak. Here's the median, here's the mean, and in here, the mean is equal to the median. So those are our three shapes. So when I look at this particular distribution, I've asked you to compare the mean to the median. I can see that this is a right skew distribution. It's a right skew distribution, which means that the mean, the mean is gonna be on the right or it's greater than the median. So when we go here and try to find that answer then, how do they compare? The mean score is about the same as the median. That's not right. The mean score is larger than the median. That's right. The mean score is smaller than the median. That's not right. And cannot estimate from the histogram. You can't estimate it from a histogram. So the answer here is B. But again, on your test, here's what you need to know. Not only do you need those shapes, you also need to know how to plug numbers into a list and find means medians, uh, quartiles, Q1 and Q3, min and max. You need to know how to find the five number summary. Also, here goes a, a perfect example of that. Number two, there are two sets of numbers. Set A is five, 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 five. Set B is four, five, six, seven. Without doing any calculations, what can you say about the standard deviation of two sets of numbers? It says without doing any calculations. I don't care if you do calculations. I expect you to plug this into your calculator, some of you. Uh, some of you may already understand the concept of standard deviation. If you understand what standard deviation is, where it's the average deviation from the mean, when I look at, when I look at this first set of numbers, they're the exact same numbers. And that means that the mean is going to be that number five. So how far are these numbers deviating from the mean? Well, they're not deviating at all from the mean. So the standard deviation would be zero. If I look at four, five, six, and seven and find its mean, that's gonna be equal to five and a half, right? I think, yeah, five and a half. And if you try to calculate this, if you try to calculate the standard deviation, that means that six is half away, five is half away, uh, it's half away, seven is one and a half away, and four is one and a half way back that way. This standard deviation is going to be a lot bigger than the standard deviation here. And if you don't believe me, let's go look at our list real quick. So we go to a list and we type these numbers in. I have four or fives here. And then the other one is four, five, six, and seven here. And remember, Num uh, the first list, five, 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 I'm not gonna do anything with that because the standard deviation is zero. But the second one, let's look at that one. That's what I wanna look at. So I'm gonna stat, calc, one bar. So I'm gonna do mine, I typed it in L3. So I'm looking at one bars. The mean here is five and a half, right? The standard deviation is S of X. It's S of X, 1.29099. Uh, so that means, that tells me already, I already had an idea that the standard deviation was larger for set B than set A, but this confirms it mathematically, all right? So here, the answer is D. But again, this is also telling you, make sure you know how to plug numbers into a list, how to read a list, all right? Make sure you understand what standard deviation is. Standard deviation, the word standard again means the statistics of where a standard means average. A deviation is how far you are away from the mean. So a standard deviation is the average distance away from the mean. That's how we read that, all right? The other things that were covered in test one that you're gonna see is this stuff about all of the experimental stuff that we did, the experiments, experiments and observations, and then uh, sampling techniques and types of data as well. Uh, for instance, if I ask you, uh, it says, which of the following is an example of a simple random sample? So you need to remember your different types of sampling methods. We have four sampling methods. They are simple random samples. And a simple random sample is I take everybody's name that's in this chat right now, put everybody's name on a list, put them in a hat, shake the hat up really well, and pull maybe three of you out. 
you all have an equal chance of being selected. All right. A, the other next time we have is what's called a systematic sample. In a systematic sample, in a, system, in a systematic sample, you would do, well, let me go through them all and show you what they are, because it gives you examples here, which is the following is a simple random sample. A teacher selects every fifth student in the class from alphabet list of class members. This right here, this first sample is systematic. And systematics are easier to identify because they tell you something about selecting every K of, of something or every set number of something. So they're selecting every fifth person. So you would take person, you start at a random value and you select every fifth person. B says the teacher writes the name of each student on the card, shuffles the cards, and then draws five names. This is what I just said to do. So that makes this a simple random sample. The next one says a teacher randomly selects five students from each of 10 classes. These are, uh, this is a grouping type of samples. There are two types of grouping samples. They are stratified samples and cluster samples. In a stratified sample, every group has representation, but not everybody is selected in that group. And in a cluster sample, only certain groups get representation but every group that gets selected, every person is select is sampled in a particular sample. So if you look at this first one, it says the teacher randomly selects five students from each of 10 classes. The question is, if I have 10 classes and I select five students from each, does every class have representation? The answer is yes, every class will get representation. Will every student from each class get representation though? The answer is no, only five are. If you look at D, a teacher randomly selects two of his 10 classes and surveys all students in the, two in the two classes selected. So the question is, do all 10 classes have representation? The answer there is no. Now, out of the two classes that were selected, out of the two classes that were selected, am I sampling everybody in those two classes? The answer there is yes. So there are two very distinctly different ways of doing this. When you select when every group has representation, if every group gets representation, this is called a stratified sample. It's called a stratified sample. If only some of the groups or certain groups get representation, but everybody within those groups gets a sample, this is called a cluster sample. So the first thing I need you to know is that um, in this particular test, on this particular test, you need to know these different sampling techniques. And not only that, you also need to know the difference between an experiment and observation. So you know the difference between an experiment and observation. In an experiment, we have a group to control and experiments we use to, uh, to do some kind of cause and effect relationship. In observation, we're just looking and observing what's taking place. The researcher has no control and has no direct control over the groups. You also need to know the different uh, terminology for experiments and observations. In particular, what a response variable is. The dependent variable is the response variable. The explanatory variable is the independent variable or a factor. You need to know what a treatment is, a specific condition applied to a group. You need to know what a placebo is. A placebo is a fake treatment or a treatment with no active ingredients. Um, you need to know what a blind and a double blind studies are. All right, so make sure you remember all those things in that first test that we took. Prof. Hello, Prof. I'm listening. So by your explanation, uh, B is the answer to this one. C is the answer, uh, B is the answer, yes ma'am. Sorry, B is the answer. That is the correct answer. All right, so continuing on then. For test one, here's what you need to know. In test one, these are the things that were covered. 
you need to know the different graphs. We didn't do a whole lot about, about the graphs. You need to know the different graphs. In particular, know how to read a histogram and a box plot. A histogram, a box plot, and a stem and leaf. Make sure you know those things. Histogram, box plot, and stem and leaf. Make sure you can do those things. And you need to know everything that comes with those. For instance, with a box plot, you need to make sure you know how to find outliers. And even though I don't have a problem over outliers, you need to make sure you can do outliers in a box plot. All right. You also need to make sure you can do, um, know the shapes, know these different shapes and what they mean. You need to be able to find summary statistics. So that's the mean, the median, Q1, Q3. Um, you also need to know how to find, you also need to know this experimental stuff right here. Sampling techniques and experiments versus observations. That all came from test one. Are there any questions before I continue on with this? Because the next one comes from, the next starts test two, the probability test. All right, so let's go to test two and talk about probability. And in probability, there were, uh, there's what's called classic probability. So we moved to random variables. We did the binomial and we did the normal. So we did those four things. So those four topics are gonna to be covered on this test in some shape or form. And if you look at this first one, it says, in a survey, 39% of readers of the Times colonists said they regularly read the sports section, and 28% said they regularly read the entertainment section. 16% of the readers read both sections. What is the probability that a randomly selected reader will read neither of these sections regularly? When I see a problem like this, the one thing that strikes me is the word both is that 16% of readers are reading both. So I have two events and 16% of the people are doing both those events. And when I see something like that, and you will see this on your test, you're gonna draw a Venn diagram. You draw a Venn diagram. So in your Venn, what you would do is you would make uh, circles for each one of the uh, act, each one of the events taking place. So it's the sports section and entertainment section. So we have the sports section and the entertainment section. And in here, I know that 16% of the people do both. So start in the middle of the Venn first and work your way out. So 16% of readers do both. It says 28% say they regularly read the entertainment. We've already got 16% of that 28 accounted for. So we do 28 minus 16, and entertainment is solely just 12. All right. And then over here, we have 16% of the 39% already accounted for. So we do 39 minus 16, and we get 23%. So these are the people that either read sports, they read only sports, these people read only sports, these people read entertainment, only entertainment, these people read sports and entertainment. That's how this works so far. The question says, what is the probability that a randomly selected reader will read neither? So neither is everybody that's sitting out here, right? In order to calculate neither, we need to calculate this, calculate what all of them are together first. And so we do 0.23 plus 0.16 plus 0.12, and I get that. So 51% of the people read some kind of article in the newspaper, in, that, in the Times columns. What percentage of people don't read anything then? Well, no, it has to add it to 100. So this will just be 1 minus 0.51. So 49% of people don't read anything. So what this takes into account, and this is what I need you to know for this, this is what we call the addition rule. This is the addition rule taking place. And another way to write the addition rule is this. The probability of S union E. The probability of sports are entertainment. That's what this is saying. 
is equal to the probability of S, the first event, which in our case was 0.39 plus the probability of E, the second event, which in our case was uh, 0.28 minus the probability of S and E, which in our case was 0.16. So, I've, so I, what I've done is if you add these two up, what you're really doing is you're adding the middle up twice. So you have to go back and subtract it off once. If you do this, you're going to get 0.51. That's the probability somebody reads something. All right. To calculate the probability that they read nothing then, we just do one minus 0.51. And so I got that 0 0.49. But that is the addition rule. Make sure you know it. Make sure you also know the multiplication rule. The multiplication rule says that if you take two events and they're independent, if two events are independent, you can multiply their probabilities. And so that allows us to do the next type of problem, which is a conditional probability problem. So this is conditional probability. And this says, at a particular school, students take one of math, chemistry, or physics, and one of history or drama. The choices are shown in the table. What is the probability to three decimal places that a student selected at random is taking physics, given that she or he is taking drama? Key word here is the word given. The word given is associated with, the, with a conditional probability. And so what this is saying, we're calculating the probability of that a person takes physics given they've taken drama. So remember, given means to draw a vertical bar. The first event if the person takes is the first event to get into the actual sample is this person has to take drama. So here are all the people that take drama. So given that you take drama, what's the probability that you're actually going to take physics. Here are the physics people, right? Now, the only people I'm actually interested in know, in order to get into the sample first off, so this is, we'll call it P. P given D. And this is equal to, in a conditional, you always restrict the bottom of the denominator first. The bottom is who goes into the sample. Do I care about all 302 people? No, I only care about the 67 people that take drama. So in the bottom of the sample is 67. Now, out of those 67 people, do I care about everybody? No, I only care about the physics people now. So in the top is gonna be the number 12. So that's 12 out of 67. And it's equal to 0.179 to three decimals. The answer here is A. And this is called a conditional probability. And in a conditional probability, we're focusing on restricting the denominator. You will see this on this test. You're gonna restrict your denominator, right? And then once you restrict your denominator, you look at the people of interest, and that's the physics people. Don't get that confused with the, uh, with the disjoint events. And in this table, it's got a two-way table, by the way. And when we look at the two-way table again, these two events, you can't be in history and drama at the same time. This is what we call disjoint events. These are disjoint. You also can't be a math major, chemistry major, or physics major at the same time as well. These are also disjoint events. So if I ask you for the probability that you are in Math or chemistry, for instance, math or chemistry. If actually for math or chemistry, you will look at the people that are in math and the people in chemistry. Notice there's no overlap between those two people. They're disjoint. But if I ask you for physics, all of these people, and drama, all of these people, notice I said the key word there was and. If it's physics and drama, right, it's only these 12 people of interest then you have to fit into both categories there. So you need to make sure you know the words, the difference between and and or. 
or it means you can fit into any category. You can fit into either one of the categories. And it means you have to fit into both to actually fit into the sample, all right? That's classic probability. Any questions on that? I feel like I'm about to get kicked out. So let me go ahead and stop this recording. I'll stop recording.